Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a soulmate twin flame love reading. Um, I'm just going to look into the collective energy and see what's going on. I think the last video I did on this was about a week ago and where we left off, um, there was some sort of truth being revealed with the karmic. Um, for those of you that are in third party situations, there was some sort of truth revealed, I feel, um, like cheating or just some type of betrayal and i think that the karmic might one of one of them might have broken up with the other one or there might have been some hurtful things said i just i was getting that three of um swords that came out and i felt like the masculine was kind of heartbroken over it but i felt like something happened so that he was no longer able to just be in denial you know what i mean he couldn't just stay in that familiar comfortable energy with the karmic relationship anymore because something happened that was almost like a tower moment. It was like this, um, just this like almost overnight shift, like these, this, this truth being revealed. Um, and it kind of pushed him out of his comfort zone and made it so he wasn't able to just, you know, ignore the red flags and just try to be comfortable and try to be complacent any longer. Like something really happened that just pushed him out of that energy. And he is sad over the karmic. He is a little bit heartbroken right now, but he's, he's not really in denial in the same way that he was you know what i mean he's not trying to put the rose colored glasses on and pretend like everything's fine and just stay in that comfortable energy anymore like whatever happened was so intense that he can't just forget about it he can't just forgive her just like that so it's like he's yeah he's not in denial about that relationship anymore he's kind of seeing it for what it is which is just a karmic relationship that is in his best interest to let go of you know if he wants to be happy if he wants to be with his actual soulmate twin flame his person then um i think you know for those of you that i'm channeling yeah he is starting to uh to be aware of that and and to realize that maybe the karmic isn't his person after all um and a, a lot of you have, i've noticed like your your twins and your soulmates are going through a lot of shadow work and dark nights of the soul and that kind of energy too so there's a lot of um and there's a lot of interesting energy so let's let's get some cards and and i just wanted to recap really quick but let's get some cards and see what's going on oh and for i think one or two of you that i'm channeling if you this this statue right here is brig she is the norse goddess of love marriage and destiny she is connected to the constellation um orion's belt she is odin's wife she is a very powerful goddess very motherly very loving um very strong all at the same time she's yeah she's worked with me she's been with me for a long time um i just i felt the need to show her name wasn't showing and i felt the need to to make sure her name was showing in this video so for <laughs> i think that might be a message for one of one or two of you if you feel connected to um you know vikings and um the old norse lifestyle the norse gods and goddesses um i i do feel like one or two of you, you frig is actually your guide and she's actually around you so um if you've been wanting to get into norse history and culture and learn about the gods and goddesses you know you're encouraged to do so um again i think that's just a specific message for one or two of you i feel like there's somebody on here that's been kind of curious about um about her and her energy and and maybe has felt that past life calling to the Norse gods and goddesses and the, um, you know, the, that way of life. <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, Frick is kind of here opening a door for you and saying, you know, you're welcome to, you're welcome to come explore. Again, I think that's just a specific message for somebody that was feeling really drawn and, and kind of curious and kind of new to all this, but, but you're, you're having those past life memories come up and you're kind of remembering um, who you are on a soul level. So, so yeah, you're encouraged to, to go whatever path feels right for you on your journey. Um, and again, I, I do feel like at least a couple of you do have, have Frig as a guide. Um, just a kind of random message there. Anyway, let me get into the reading. All right. Sorry. Sometimes when I'm doing these readings, I'll just get quick random messages for the people that are watching. So sometimes they're really specific and it's just for one or two people. Um, Okay, and I, I need to I need to turn my cards right side up. So I'm I'm not I'm putting it out there right now. I'm not intending on reading any of these cards backwards. Um, I'm gonna turn them all right right side up. Okay, so for the people that are watching, um, 
how is your, your soulmate, your twin flame, how are they feeling towards you right now? How are they feeling towards you right now? What are they, what are they wanting? What are they thinking? Like just, just for the, the group that I'm channeling, what are your soulmates, your twin flames, whoever, whoever, you know, it could be an ex, could be a new person, just whatever energy has come through, um, that are right for you, that resonate with you. Um, what are your, what are your masculines feeling? What are they, what's going on with them? <laughs> okay. We're going to take those. All right. Lust. Okay. So that kind of makes sense with the karmic because I did say that they, well, I, we got the lust card for the last reading actually with the karmic. So that does make sense. Um, and it kind of makes sense that they're still in a little bit of pain with this. Like they're not, um, they're just not completely over it, the karmic. I think that she's kind of trying to dig her. This is for those of you in third party situations. Um, if you have like this karmic situation going on, I kind of think she's trying to dig her heels in again. She's trying to kind of manipulate and seduce him and bring him back. I also feel like, I feel like this, this has two different messages. I think for some of you, they are, they are trying to get back. Um, I think for others, I think that the, the feminine might actually be a, a fed up with the man here too and just letting him go. Um, I mean, the karmic might be fed up with him and just be like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of tired of this. And I think that he might be um, maybe messing around with other people or just, just like he's just not himself right now. He's just trying to feel better is what's going on. He's basically just trying to feel better and kind of like wishing things could go back to the way they were. Um and also wishing for you, too. I think that he knows that you have a very real and very, um, you know, important, deep connection. I think that he's kind of becoming more aware of that now. Then we have focus. I want to see what other cards come out. Focus, playful, the warrior. Okay, interesting. I think... I want to say with the arrow shooting here, it's almost like he is still kind of focused on the past a little bit. But again, he can't be in denial anymore. But I feel like in the near future, he's going to get in this playful energy, which I think the karmic kind of stole that energy from him. I think that with you, he can be playful and he can be a little bit more laid back. And he's just, you bring out a different side of him than the karmic does is what I feel. Um and with this playful energy, I think now that that's kind of, it's getting, it's distancing itself, I think that he's going to get back into this playful energy where he kind of reclaims himself, where he kind of, you know, focuses on his hobbies and the things he loves again and just getting that energy back that she stole from him. And he's also getting the warrior energy back, which is, you know, strength and confidence and courage um, and rebuilding himself so he can come forward towards you. All right, let's see what else we have. We have summon. Fragment. See, yeah. So we have summon and fragment. So it's kind of like he's trying to summon the energy and courage to like get through this and to be okay. But he just feels like, like all the heartbreak and pain he's been through, maybe with you and with his karmic and with other people in his life, maybe family problems, that kind of thing. Like he feels like he's fragmented. He just feels like this could be a masculine that needs soul retrieval. Like he might actually need to get like from a, like from a real shaman, he might need to get like a soul retrieval session or maybe just do a meditation on his own. If he's, if that's something that he does. Um, cause I just feel like he's like here, he's like trying to summon this energy and courage and he's trying to be, he's trying to come forward to you and leave the karmic behind and be your equal partner and be good for you. But it's like, he feels like he's fragmented. He feels like he's lost a lot of himself with her and with other, you know, toxic relationships in his life. Like he just feels like he doesn't have as much energy as he used to. He just, he's not the same person. So he's, he's really struggling with his self-confidence right now, but you're here as the high priestess of spirit. So I think that intuitively you are helping him probably like in the astral realm and through dreams and just like psychic um, communication. I feel like you, you probably really are maybe meditating on him and that kind of thing. And I think that he's feeling that. I think that when you try to, when you pray for him or when you just send him this, this loving high vibrational energy and just put the intention in of, of, you know, him being okay and him being safe and him being happy, you know, you're coming from a place of the heart. And I think that that goes a long way for you. And I, I do feel like he really feels that. 
Um, so I guess the main update we're just getting from this reading is, is just that he's still in that process that, you know, it makes sense. It was only a week ago. So, you know, can't expect him to get through it overnight, but it's kind of the same process where, um, yeah, he's, he's just healing from this. He's, um, he's in a bit of pain right now, but he's, he's trying to push forward. Um, he's trying to, to summon the confidence and the courage to come to you. If you guys have gone a long time without talking, I feel like it might be awkward. He might not know if you would take him back. He might not even feel good enough for you because I feel like he has a, a habit of going through for um, kind of toxic karmic partners. And so he might just be used to that energy. And I feel like he almost feels like you're just too different and too good for him. Like he doesn't really know. I don't know how to explain it. It's like you're just different. You're very different with him. I do feel like a silly loving relationship though in some ways. Like I feel like I feel this I feel like you bring out another side of him and I feel like he's missing that side right now because he couldn't really be that way with the with the karmic. And so he's kind of nostalgic for you right now too and he's kind of torn, you know what I mean? It's like he wanted to just be complacent and just pretend like everything was all sunshine and, and daisies with the karmic and it's just not happening and he knows it now. And I feel like She's, I think she's tried to be manipulative and she's, they maybe try to work things out a little bit, but I feel like whatever she did recently, like within the last month, like he's not forgetting about it. Like it's still in his head. He's still mad about it. He's, he can't really look at her the same now. I think he wants to, he wishes he could, but he just can't. And he knows that. Um, so, so yeah, like I said, he's getting out of that denial energy. Um, and just, yeah, reclaiming himself, rebuilding himself. It's, it's good. Might be a little bit of a back and forth energy. That's why I told you guys, you know, if this resonates, you should probably watch my last video on this too, just to get, there's probably more of an update there for you. Um, as well, the, the karmic reading I did last week, um, just, you know, as I was saying before, make sure not to put too much pressure on him right now because he's very lost and confused and he's very vulnerable and very emotional right now. Um, and he's sick of the karmic manipulating him. Like he's kind of, he's a sweet guy, but I think he's kind of like more aware now that she's been manipulating him. He's like, he's starting to look back and see little red flags and things that he was in denial about before and didn't see before. Now he's starting to get it. He's starting to realize how bad it really was that he was just kind of on autopilot and not seeing what was around him. Um, but again, you know, he's, he's so sick of that energy. So he's going to be kind of, um, sensitive and very quick to feel like he's being controlled or manipulated or misunderstood. So you really have to, to take caution when having conversations with him. And, um, and for a lot of you, I would say probably don't even text at all. Or if you do text, just keep it very light. No deep conversations about where you guys stand or anything like that right now, because he needs to process. And when he is going through this like dark night of the soul kind of energy that he's going through, like he's going to look back and remember who was just supportive and loving and like a good friend to him. And he's going to look back and remember who made it about themselves and who, you know, kind of brought this drama in. You know what I mean? Like it's going to it's going to feel so much worse to him when he looks back in the future, if that makes sense, because this is such a sensitive time for him that, you know, if you're not careful, he could just be like, oh, yeah, I remember that I was going through so much shit and she got mad at me because I haven't texted her lately. You know, and it's like, you guys have the right to be mad. I'm just, I'm just giving you, you should be mad. I'm not saying you shouldn't, you know, um, but I'm just giving you a warning as to where I feel like your masculine's mental state is at so that you take caution when texting and calling if you guys do decide to text at all. Um, anyway, all right. So, so we know that we know he's working through all this karmic, um, karmic gibberish going on right now. What are his most likely actions towards you within the next couple of weeks. Okay. Okay, so the death card came out. Do not freak out because I think that's more talking about the karmic, not so much about you. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I didn't mean to read that upside down, so I'm putting them all up right side up because I need to need to redo my cards. 
I'm about to death in the Queen of Pentacles. All right. Okay, so I kind of think that this is still talking about the karmic. I hate when I get these readings because I want to tell you guys, like, he's coming in next week. He's going to propose to you. It's going to be lovely. So it always makes me sad when I can't say that because I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I don't feel that. I actually feel like he's still dealing with the karmic bullshit. <laughs> Um, it's been, it's been a very hot, cold relationship. Well, more than ever, it's a hot, cold relationship with them now. I think there might've been like this fake sense of stability, but they, they both knew it wasn't the per their person. So with the three of wands, I kind of think this is her where she's just, look at her. She's like, she's serious. She's mean. She's dominating. She's just, she's not great. Like she's got this skull in her hand. She's got no empathy. She's just like, wants to fight somebody. Um, and your masculine here is kind of looking forward with the sun. He's like, trying to move on. He was trying his best to look forward and to be hopeful and to be positive here. And with the world card, it's kind of like he gets in this energy where he is celebrating that, um, you know, his accomplishments and getting back in touch with his true self and, you know, just finding himself again after this relationship. But then it's like poverty hits. Um, this could be financial issues like fine like codependent financial codependency related to finances with them. Something about finances, like connected finances or something that may make it hard to fully get away. Um Yeah, there's something with finances, I think. Or there's something like like they work together, or there's something with like pentacles, like career, work, finances, abundance, something that's like tied to the karmic. So it's like he's kind of hopeful and he thinks he's getting away and then he's like, it's like that energy pulls him back. He's like, okay, I can't fully be free. Um, and then we have the lovers. So it's like they kind of try to work through things. Um, but it's almost like a manipulative energy, I feel. It's like it's... Like, I think maybe maybe one or both of them is kind of trying to work through things, but I just feel like the masculine knows it's over. Like, I feel like he knows, like, he's not going to be happy with her again. You know what I mean? Like, if he was ever even happy with her at all, like, it's, it's definitely can't be happy with her now. Um, yeah, I just feel like he's, it's like they just kind of know it's over, you know what I mean? But there's still that, like, familiarity and their, that comfort. So it's like I still see them, like, having arguments, you know what I mean? Like, I see them being done with each other's shit, but I still see them, like, over the next couple weeks or so, I still see them arguing and going back and forth and, like, pushing each other's buttons and trying to hurt each other. So it's kind of like this back and forth energy where he's like, screw this person, I'm done, I deserve better. I want to, you know, find myself again. And then he's like, there's something with finances or just something still connected to this person. And so it's like, it's just this hot and cold back and forth, very toxic, codependent karmic situation that they're in right now. But with the death card, I feel like that's over. I feel like it is, it is ending. It's just, um, it's on its way out, basically. You know what I mean? It's not like it's it's not like a for for most of these car, uh, most of these masculines that I'm channeling, it's not like it's over and they're done talking. It's more like it's over, but they're gonna keep fighting and she's gonna try to slit his tires or or she's gonna try to use something against him and then they're gonna have some make makeup sex or something and then a few days later they're gonna tell each other to go f off and just just that kind of toxic <laughs> maybe not to that extreme but it's it's um just that kind of very like unstable all over the place energy where it's like it is ending it's just not ending smoothly and quietly and all at once it's more like a just chaotic like like let's try and make this work for a couple more weeks until we absolutely hate each other even more than we already do <laughs> is what's going on. So, so yeah, after all of that comes the death of that relationship. And then the queen of pentacles, that's you. You hold the key. Um, you've been waiting for this. And I think that you are more financially stable too. So I kind of think that you help him out of this toxic energy that he's in. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say that you would help him financially. It's just kind of like you have a way out for him, I guess, is you have this support that he needs um, to get where he wants in life, I guess, is what I should say. 
But yeah, it feels good. Um, let me see if I can get some updates at all. Because I wanted to get more about, you know, focus more on you guys. But I, that's just kind of what came out is, is mostly just the the karmic stuff that he's going through has really got his attention right now. But um, let's see. Can I just get some messages? So for the, the feminines that are watching or, you know, whatever energy you're in, just for your... Um, for your masculine, it's like, what, what's going on? Like, what else? I mean, aside from the, the karmic situation, like, can you tell me anything about what the masculine feels towards his feminine right now? Towards his real feminine, you know, towards you guys that are watching, like, what is he, how does he feel about that? I get guilt for one thing. I feel guilt. I feel like he knows he fucked up. I think he stops himself from texting you quite a bit. Well, I mean, if she's around too, that makes sense. Reminder. Trapped. Deceit. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Lust. All right. That actually makes a lot of sense. This is all about the karmic again, but it's kind of saying like he's reminded of you. Like we have the reminder card here. And so it's like maybe songs or certain places you guys used to go together or conversations you've had or um, just little things will remind him of you. But it's like he feels trapped, you know, he doesn't feel like he can really fully get away from the karmic yet. And if she's around him a lot, too, that's another thing. It's like he can't really text you if he's got all these people around him or like if he's, you know, friends with people she's friends with. It's like it, it just makes the whole thing a lot harder and more complicated um, and then we have the, the deceit card, you know, and then the lust card, which is again, talking about her. You gotta notice how she's looking at this. It's like, she just did something. I don't know what she did to him, but she just did some shit. She just said, you know, it's, it's like what I was saying in the last reading too. It's still that same energy where it's like, she really just did something bad. Like she just got caught cheating or she just, she told him a secret. She, I don't know, something like she just, she did some shit and he's, he can't go back to how it was, but she's trying to get into this lust energy and seduce him and, and, and drag him back in again and be all cute and remind him of, of why he wanted her in the first place. But it's like, it's not working. It's just like this toxic kind of lust energy where it's like, like angry makeup sex, but there's like no love when they have sex. There's no like, they don't like look in each other's eyes. It's just like, they're just pissed at each other and they need to get that out. <laughs> it's, 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 there's no real emotion there right now. It's just this toxic familiar energy that just keeps playing back and forth over and over again. Um, but yeah, with this deception, it's like, she's trying to pretend like it didn't happen and, and get back in this, this lust energy and just seduce him. And, and I don't think he's having it though. He knows, he knows better. Well, I mean, like I said, I think it's going to be turbulent for a couple weeks. I think it's going to be back and forth. I think he's going to want to believe maybe she can change. Maybe this could work. Um, cause it's familiar and comfortable, but I think that he, he knows he's not in denial anymore though. You know what I mean? It's like, he, how do I, how do I explain that energy? Cause I feel like it probably sounds like such a contradiction. Um, Like, he knows now it's never going to go back to how it was. He knows that she's not the person that he wanted her to be or that hoped that she would be. Um, like, he gets that, I think. Um, I think the denial is more like he's just afraid of going out on his own. He's afraid of, like, the unfamiliar, uncomfortable energy. He's afraid of, like, if they're living together, I feel like he's, like, afraid of, like, moving out on his own and being alone again. Um, he's afraid of, like messaging you and having you reject him um if you guys haven't talked for a while i feel like he's um he's just afraid of the unknown basically is what it comes down to so so yeah it's like this toxic codependency back and forth for a while and it's just kind of rigid and stubborn but i do feel like he's getting out of it with <laughs> chaos that's kind of what there was this wall here this rigid wall and the chaos which is what just happened um you know, that's what I was just, what we were just talking about, the, the cheating, the betrayal, whatever it is that she just did that was so bad, that was the chaos that was needed 
um, all that drama, whatever just happened, that was the chaos that was needed to break these walls down and get him into this dark night of the soul energy and get him finally, as messy and chaotic as it is, finally get it through his head that it's not, that's not going to happen anymore. And then, yeah, after all that, he's going to summon the energy to, um, the energy and the courage to talk to you, I feel. I do still feel the love for you there. It's just, it, it's just with this karma, it gets very... It's just chaotic. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me get you guys some final messages. Hold on. All right, so this is a deck that I made. I'm going to pull a few cards from it. So what do we get that you're going to need some time to heal and go through this process and that you're really sensitive and you need your space right now, but what can you, what can you tell your feminines that are watching? What do you want them to know about your connection, about what you feel, about, you know, whatever. I almost feel like the stubbornness, it's like they're so sensitive and so hurt right now that it's like they don't feel like they, they want to reach out to people, but they don't feel like they can. They don't feel like they can talk to anyone right now with what they're going through. All right, so what do you want your feminines to know? Okay. I trust you. I feel like I've known you my entire life. That was the first one I got. Sorry, you can't see that. I don't know why these never show up on camera. <laughs> Can you guys see that at all? No, not really, huh? All right, but... <laughs> So I trust you. I feel like I've known you in my entire life. So that connection is there. That is, he knows it's more stable. He's just not used to stable. I think he's used to the drama. There are jealous and bitter people nearby that want to keep us apart. So yeah, like I was saying about the karmic, it's like he does, he is reminded of you and he is nostalgic and he does miss you. But then it's like, she's right by his side in the car or something. So it's like, he can't text because she's right there. Or, um, just her energy is so controlling and dominant that it's, it's like, it's hard. It's, it's hard for him to reach out to, even though he does want to, um, do not repeat the same cycle. So release unwanted patterns and toxic people. So I feel like for some of you, this is like, if you're in a pattern with your masculine, where it's like, he gets to come back to you whenever he wants. And then he just goes and does his own thing. And then a year later he comes back. It's like saying, you know what? Like, don't, don't keep going through that cycle. Don't keep going for men that need to be like, you know, fixed and saved and um, in that energy. Like you got it. You might need to set boundaries with this masculine that's in question. You know what I mean? Like you might need to give him an ultimatum at a certain point. When he comes back around this time, you might need to be a little bit more. Um, you, you just need to change that pattern. You know what I mean? You might need to, need to be a little bit more forward. And I feel like he's also in, also breaking um, unwanted patterns. So he, you know, it's kind of like a time just to be patient with him. Love is now manifesting for you in the physical realm as a result of your affirmations, ritual, energy, and intention. So this is for a group. I feel like you guys really have been meditating or, or doing something like in your dreams or just there's some type of telepathic communication between you and your masculine and, I, and he feels that and whatever you're doing you know you are manifesting love for yourself yeah here we go i have been trying to reach you telepathically go into meditation and find me <laughs> so you guys are communicating that way it seems um your empathy and openness draws me to you i love your willingness to be honest and vulnerable your heart is pure. So again, he loves how sweet you are. He loves how loving and like open and empathetic you are. Um, that draws him in. It's just like, it's different for him. He's not used to that, but he does love that about you. Um, I miss you. Your independence, confidence, and strength draws me to you. So it's interesting. We got these two cards. We got both. We got your independence, confidence, and strength draws me to you and your empathy and openness draws me to you. So it's kind of like be your empathetic, loving, romantic, open self, but also be independent and confident and um, and set boundaries if he's been taking you for granted. You know what I mean? Like don't allow that again. So it's like he, he loves how good you are and how amazing and different and unique you are. But like for some of you, I do feel like you have to set stronger boundaries so he doesn't just take that for granted and kind of go back and forth like a little ping pong ball between you and the karmic 
and the soul contracts that keep us imprisoned and apart. So some of you might need to do meditations to end soul contracts or just, you know, general subconscious patterns and old patterns that are weighing both of you guys down. Can you forgive me after all I've done? I feel so ashamed. So again, he does feel really guilty. Um, I want to tell you my secrets. I am ready to be open and honest with you. So he is getting to a point where he's feeling like he can be more vulnerable with you. And he's wanting to be more emotionally open than he was in the past with you. I feel like before he was kind of, um, I don't know, like he might have had more of a hard time expressing his emotions. But I feel like he's getting out of that energy now where he's he's going to start talking to you more, I think. Okay, and then... All right, let's see. Okay, so final messages for the, for everyone that's watching this video. Final, what are some some just some guidance messages that messages that I can give to the people that are watching this video? Surrender to prayer. So give yourself over completely to prayer. When you pray from your heart, you will be heard throughout the universe and answers and support will arrive. So again, I feel like this is a very spiritual group of people that I'm channeling that, you know, do meditate and do pray and, and maybe have vision boards or, or affirmations and that kind of thing. Um, surrender your attachment to results. The formula for success is to do all you can to make things happen, but then let go of the results. Holding on too tightly to, to a desired outcome can sabotage it. So I think it's basically just saying while your masculine is going through this dark night of the soul, continue to pray for him, continue to, to send him healing energy, loving energy, support him um, telepathically in your dreams, astrally, through meditation, all of that. Um, but also kind of let go and make sure you're living your life too and not just waiting around for him. You know what I mean? Like he'll feel that energy when you're living your life and going out and doing stuff more. Um and, and yeah, it's just it's just saying just just surrender, um, yeah, surrender your attachment to to results. Surrender to rest and sleep. You know, for those of you maybe going through a purging process, it says to prevent burnout, slow down, honor your need for quiet time and peaceful sleep, to rejuvenate your mind, body, and spirit. So there's like a heavy energy of meditation here too, where it's like you just need to to relax. Don't worry about it so much. Just just try to do what makes you happy right now and surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break and spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and the ecstasy there. So I think a lot of you guys do need to recharge. I think you're purging and I think that you... I think this this moon, this moon pink moon was very interesting. It was very like... I mean, it was strong. There was like a lot of energy to it, but I almost feel like it was kind of purging and kind of exhausting in some way too. Um, surrender your fear of change. The universe is reminding you that you are cared for always. Whether you are afraid of a change in your job, your health, or relationship, or if you fear aging or death, repeat the affirmation, I have faith that all is well. So I think surrendering, surrendering your fear of change, for one thing, I think it's um, being open to what's around you, you know, being open to like the potential of even dating somebody new and coming back to your, your twin flame or your person at a later date. It's um, surrendering the, the fear of the setting boundaries and... Um, and just doing what you need to do, it's it's just, it, it's, how do I explain that? It's like you guys are kind of mirroring each other in that way where you're both being pushed out of your comfort zone right now. And surrender worry. Make a commitment not to lead an anxiety-driven life. When worries arise, breathe them out of your body. Focus on the power of your heart and have faith that spirit is guiding you always. Surrender to what is. Flow with what is in, what is instead of fighting it. When you can't change a situation, compassionately accepting it exactly as it is will bring you peace. So for these feminines, it's kind of like your masculine is going through all this crap with his karmic right now. And you don't want to get dragged into all that dramatic energy. You know what I mean? You, you kind of just want to try to live in the moment and just meditate and just do what's best for yourself right now. While still at the same time sending him healing, loving energy, if that makes sense. All right, please like, share, subscribe if this resonated. Um, let me know. Thank you, guys.